What's up everybody, my name is Martin and welcome to a new video. To a new video. So, today we are visiting the wonderful town of Maastricht, which is in the south of the Netherlands. And I'm going to take you around for a little tour to show you some places which were visited during the Second World War by either the Germans and Americans. Um, before we start off, right here beside, uh, on my side you can see a large concrete structure, as you see. And I'm going to show you around what this is and what happened over here. So let's go. So as you can see on the side of the monument here, there is a logo from the 30th Infantry Division. And they entered Maastricht from that side. And uh, on the 13th of September 1944, they helped to liberate the town, uh, the town of Maastricht. <clears throat> on this uh, location, as you can see here, uh, they crossed the Maas River on the 14th of uh, September 1944. And this monument was uh, commemorated on the 50th anniversary uh, of the liberation of uh, Maastricht in 1949. So I lived in uh, Maastricht for 23 years and I never actually knew what this monument was all about uh, until I started to, uh, to become really interested in the Second World War. And about two years later, when I just knew a little bit more about the Second World War, uh, I came by this place, I saw the sign of the 30th Infantry Division and ever since the 30th Infantry Division has a special little place in my heart because they uh, liberated the town where I was born. <laughs> so like I was telling, uh, I only knew that the monument was from the uh, 30th Infantry Division just years ago and now that we are walking around here, I s this is actually the first time that I see this stone here. And it says that the monument was put up for the 30th Infantry Division, who of course crossed the Maas River in nine, uh, on 14 14th of September 1944. But it has some more information, excuse me for the noise, uh, that it was the uh, 2nd Battalion uh, from the 117th Regiment. So that's really interesting that I only just uh, now find this, uh, this stone here. And if it's up to me, they could have put it in a bit more obvious spot. But uh, yeah, nice to see some extra information here. So on the 10th of May 1940, the Germans invaded Maastricht. And they came from that direction somewhere, because there is Germany, and right over there <laughs> is Belgium. And right here, we have come to uh, one of my first locations. Right here you have this wall, you can see the fence here. And there's one quite famous picture of some German tanks. It's this picture here. And it was the exact same location. So you can see two uh, Panzer tree tanks, I think. One motorcycle between them. Some uh, Dutch kids. And 
until this day the fence along the river is still the same. So by now I, beg, uh, I guess you can know what this video will all about. We are visiting World War II locations in Maastricht. It's not just the monuments. So this is the first. Now let's go to the second one. So this is our second location which we are uh, going to visit. Right here. I have my little map. You can see the uh, old castle piece here. A bit of the fence. Once again, you can see that the fence is the same as on the, as on the picture. And this is also from the 10th of May 1940. So you can see five or six uh, German soldiers. Two standing over there, four standing over there. In the background you can still see the city. So this is also a very clear location. So, very lo interesting location, and now we are going to another uh, location. So we go that way. Let's go. So we just came from that direction, and we were walking through this street, and we're actually on our way to the train uh, overpass, uh, and. We try to look for as much history as possible in this uh, city and I just saw this plaque and it said on the 10th of May 1940 during the German uh, occupation uh, there was resistance from this building by a section of the uh, 13th regiment of the uh, border battalion and I think this plaque was uh, commemorated on uh, in uh, 1995 so like I said at the monument I used to live for 23 years in Maastricht and this is actually the first time that I see this sign sadly there are not really traces of fighting in this building but still it's really interesting so, as I was saying, we're on our way to the train overpass, so let's continue. Alright, we have come to our next location. And this is our uh, train overpass. Right there, this is, you can see a brown building. And we can also see that on some pictures that I have here. First, I'm going to show you this one. This is uh, on the 10th of May 1940 and you can see some Germans on a horseback riding towards the train, st uh, train station which is over there. Here is a small building and one bigger building that says, uh, it says Fort on the side. Sadly those are gone, they were supposed to be somewhere around here. Right over here on this page I have a photo from the same area during liberation. You can see some American soldiers walking here. Right here would be that brown building over there. And like I said in the previous photo, the small building and the big building with the fort on the side, they are both gone. So as you can see, pretty much of the original photo is gone. Um, but we managed to uh, find at least some points that we showed this building here um, that we can use where the camera position should have been. Right now we're going to the next location which will be in front of the, uh, of the station. So let's go. So on 13 September of 1944 the Americans came to liberate the, the city of Maastricht and right here we are standing in front of the train station and I have this picture here you can uh, see the train station right over here it will be the same building and um, the only thing that we cannot recognize is this piece right here and it would probably be have standing somewhere over here 
um, but what we think is that this part of the station was later constructed than this part because I'm not sure if you can see it on video this part right here is a bit darker than over there but still it is clearly visible that this part will be over there it's nice to see some American GIs walking in front of the station to help deliberate the city of Maastricht let's go to our next location so right here we are on our uh, next, uh, next location right there in the distance you can still see the train station and we are here for this photo so as, you, as I said in the distance there's the station I recognize this balcony as this one there's some Germans walking right where those people are and one fun little thing that we uh, came up with is the car which is located right here it will be where the red car uh, is standing and it would say that the car is from the Zuid Nederlandse Stoomtram line which means the South Netherlands steam engine line and this car was coming from Breda which is a city in the Netherlands and it was uh, licensed in 1933 also right here on the car uh, on the photo it says uh, Hotel Willems you can see that right here and Hotel Willems was a German uh, station where the Germans would be located for uh, the time of the war and when Maastricht was liberated in September 1944 uh, some Americans were coming here one of those men was private first class hold up I have to check this uh, private first class green tree and he was part of the 1104th engineer combat group so this would be the headquarters of the 1104th um, engineer combat group um, while they were checking this building for booby traps um, in the evening one of the booby traps exploded killing private first class green tree and just a bit further down that road there would be a purple heart against uh, the wall uh, commemorated to him so we're going to check that out right now so we uh, came to the monument of private first class William Greentree as you can see there's a purple heart died on the uh, 14th of September 1944 was part of the 247th engineer battalion of the US Army one thing that I don't really understand is that they put this uh, plaque up here instead of the actual building which will be way there in the distance so at least I think it's good that they put something up here but uh, yeah they could have put it on their uh, on the actual building where private uh, green, tree, uh, green tree was killed so quite an interesting location right now we are on the cozy Kervelsplein and right over there you can see a small uh, building and right here is a photo of the liberation <coughs> you can see some USGI's walking in front right here is the same building you can still recognize this little wall over here which would be over there where the people are sitting on the terrace and right here this building is the one right over there the 
now we're going to the next location which will be just behind the bridge all right so <laughs> uh, you can see this uh, picture also on my Instagram the during the war and the nowadays photo uh, as you can see there is a terrace right in front of me but still clearly recognizable from this photo so in the distance right over there you can see this part of the bridge of course every structure that is on there has been removed sadly <clears throat> and of course the bridge was rebuilt after the war because the Dutch soldiers blew it up during the May days of 1940 to uh, postpone the German invasion. On my next page I have another photo uh, next to the bridge, so we're going there right now. Okay, this is our last photo from the German occupation. As you can see right now, the bridge is restored. Buses are driving over it, people are walking over it. But you can see right here that in the May days of 1940 it was a different view. <clears throat> so you can see two Germans on each uh, on either side of the photo. And one would actually have been standing somewhere over here. And the other one probably from our point of view somewhere over here. As I mentioned before, when we were standing over there next to the terrace, they took away these, uh, these little towers on top, which I think is a shame, because I, uh, I really like them though. But um, yeah, during the time, they had to make some changes of course, so uh, now it looks like this these days. <clears throat> I still have some more uh, photos coming. Uh, these are more from the, American uh, liberation so let's go to the next part of this video let's go so we have two locations at once on this uh, position here on one side we have this one during the occupation with the flags with the swastikas on there you can recognize the building here on the left, which will be this one. Actually, it should have been approximately 20 meters up front, but still you can, uh, can recognize it. And the second one. Is this location. Let's see. It is this uh, American soldier. You can uh, see him standing right over here. And he's probably talking to some Dutch people or maybe uh, another soldier, I don't know. At least somebody who's standing on top of these stairs. This is. Uh, which is nowadays the city information center called the VVV. Way back in the history, it was the, I think it was the city prison or? Uh, it's the courthouse. Uh, the courthouse. Really beautiful building. Uh, for the next uh, photo, we're gonna move up a little bit in this uh, street so you can see the the entire courthouse at its full glory. I think this would be the correct location for the next photo. Which is this one. Right here in the distance you can see the courthouse. On this photo you can see some American soldiers walking. Right over there on the other side of the street. This would be a German officer.
can see the liberation flags hanging from the sides of the buildings. Oops, an extra hand. So yeah, nowadays and during the liberation of Maastricht. It is uh, quite busy today, as you can see. All right, let's go to the next location. Okay, so um, the Germans had the NSDAP, which was the German Socialist uh, Work Party, or, uh, or the National Socialist Deutsche Arbeiterpartei. And in the Netherlands, we had the NSB, which stands for uh, National Socialist Bond. This building right over here was the uh, district house of the NSB. And I can't really remember which year it was, but Anton Mussert, who was the leader part, uh, the party leader, uh, he was visiting this district house uh, during the pre years or during the German occupation of Maastricht. So, like I said, I don't really remember the exact year when he was uh, when he was here, but uh, this is also a place which had great value during the Second World War, or at least in the three years. And now it's just a nice bar. You can have some drinks here and some nice food. Different times. So, right now we are on the Market Square in Maastricht, with the beautiful government building in the middle. Let's give you a quick overview. You can see there was some uh, market going on today. But that was just a little bit different in 1944. Right here, you can see a picture with some German prisoners of war, all kinds of civilians around it, some American soldiers standing uh, next to them. And that would be happening right over here. So I've uh, been asking the lady from the shop behind me if it was possible to take this picture from the first uh, floor to get it as accurate as possible. But uh, sadly the owner of the, uh, of the building was not at home, so there was no possibility for that. But I put my uh, camera on a tripod, so once again you can see this picture has been taken from at least the first floor. I'm going to do my best. That is what it would be look like these days. Amazing. Okay, we have just a little bit uh, more locations to go. Uh, it's getting uh, kind of late now, so uh, we tried, uh, gonna hurry to get uh, the last locations on camera, so uh, we can uh, make this into a nice video. So there is a nice little courtyard here, in between these cute little houses, with a little park. But, there is also some history here. Sadly we cannot enter, because the, the gate is closed as you can see. But um, this would be a bomb shelter. It says Schuilkelder, which means bomb shelter. Uh, right there, there you can see the fence. And uh, yeah, this was to uh, protect the civilians of the German air raids. Uh, this shelter was also used during the Cold War, um, but especially during the Second World War. Uh, I can imagine that this shelter would have been used multiple times. Um, it says on the board right there. Let me zoom in a little bit. The shelter entrance under this uh, garden uh, was used during the Second World War to be a air raid shelter. When the air alarm went off many thousands of people used 
these kinds of air raid shelters also during the Cold War so yeah like I said sadly we cannot enter because what I've seen on pictures it looks quite interesting to visit this but um, I think it's interesting that you just walk around here not knowing what this is you just see a nice little garden here and all of a sudden you come across a World War II air raid shelter It is possible to visit, but you have to call the VVV where we were earlier to make an uh, appointment. I tried to call today if it was possible to uh, get somebody over here that we can film inside, but uh, sadly nobody was answering this phone. So I have one spot left where we're going, uh, going to drive to now. It is just outside of Maastricht. If you ever want to visit Maastricht, it is within range that you can visit it easily by bike or by car. Or if you're really fanatic, you can go even there by foot. I wouldn't recommend it personally because it's about 10 kilometers out of uh, Maastricht. But uh, I think it's going to be a very interesting uh, place. So let's go there right now. As nice and peaceful this southern Netherlands countryside can be. Just as many other places, this was uh, a place with a lot of history. As you can see right here, there are some concrete constructions and this is a uh, monument and it says um, when the Allied uh, forces bombed Germany um, they had to remove uh, to move the war industry to bomb free zones so under under the supervision of Organisation Tod, who were also responsible for the building of the Atlantic Wall, uh, they moved uh, to this location in March of 1944. And these were actually the uh, working places, underground working places, uh, to, uh, to restore BMW engines for the planes. So, as you can see right over here, there was one of the entrances of the caves. Right over there is another one. I'll show you that in a little bit. But this entire area was 9,200 square meters of working place to, uh, to repair the engines of the German bombers. So the concrete structures that you can right, uh, see right here were also possibly the um, installations for the V2 rockets. It's really crazy to think about that this was such a huge area of 9,200 square meters, which uh, were working about 700, uh, which were working about 700 people here. And nowadays, it's just concrete structure with a lot of overgrowth and uh, yeah just laying here in the beautiful Limburg countryside so as I was saying there's uh, also a big entrance uh, right here sadly it says no entrance and I'm not sure how far we can see through this hole here like absolutely nothing so that's too bad but uh you can imagine big gate right here looks also some kind of entrance and yeah you just have to imagine that uh, with 700 people working around here this would have been quite a crowded area Ah oh man, I always love coming here, it's just so peaceful and just really, really beautiful environment. But, nevertheless, with a bit of a dark history. So, I'm with the, the amazing Limburg countryside in my back. We are going to end this video. It was a really amazing day, we have seen quite a lot. 
I tried to show you as much as possible of the uh, of the photos that I can uh, find. So uh, tried to give you a little bit of an idea what Maastricht during the Second World War uh, would have looked like. Um, also, I tried to make it a little bit into a uh, into a history tour, starting with the, the German occupation in, uh, in 1940 on the 10th of May, all the way to the liberation when the 30th Infantry Division uh, entered Maastricht. Uh, also, I was able to show you a uh, photo of the POWs, of the prisoners of war, in uh, in Maastricht on a market square. Sadly, due to a concert of André Rieux, who is a big celebrity in this area, we were not able to um, to show you some pictures on the Vrijthof. Um, I will post them in this video as well, so you can uh, see what it would have looked like. But like I said, there is now a big uh, stage on there where André Rieux is giving his uh, his shows. So. Not of nothing that I could show you there, but uh, nonetheless, here are the photos. Like I said, that was it for this video. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, feel free to ask down in the comments. Leave a thumbs up if you enjoyed the video, and I will see you next time. Bye bye. Oh,